Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the previous session, we have covered all the addition related arithmetic group of instructions. From this session onwards, we will be focusing on the subtraction operation. Therefore, in this session, we are going to learn about the instruction types SUBR, SUID8 and DCRR. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. At first, we will learn about the instruction type SUBR. Thereafter, we will learn about the instruction type SUID8. And finally, we will learn about the instruction type DCRR. So let's begin with the first instruction type SUBR. Now coming to the instruction type SUBR, in this instruction, the mnemonic that is SUB stands for subtract. And the instruction means subtract contents of R from accumulator. So one of the operands will reside within the accumulator and the other operand is going to be stored in any location which will be specified by this capital R. Now once the operation is performed, that is, the subtraction is once performed, thereafter the result of the subtraction will also be stored in the accumulator. So coming to the instruction type SUBR, just like the instruction ADDR, SUBR also falls under the one byte long instructions category. Let's now learn about the different instructions of this type. Now in the previous sessions, I have already told you, when instead of small r we consider capital R, this covers the accumulator, all the GPRs, that is the general purpose registers, and along with those, we also include the memory element. So there are eight different instructions, or we can also say the opcodes for this instruction type. Let me tell you one interesting fact. If we execute the instruction SUBA, after the operation, the contents within the accumulator register is going to be all zeros. Think about it. The microprocessor 8085 is designed in such a way that one of the operands in any operation will have to be inside the accumulator register. Execution of the instruction SUBA means we are going to subtract that particular value from itself. So clearly, after the execution of this instruction, that is SUBA, the contents within the accumulator register is going to be zero. Isn't it? Now let me show you an illustration using which we will understand how this instruction type is going to work. Say within the accumulator register, we have got one operand that is F1 and within the general purpose register B, we have got the other operand, say 1, 2. Now in order to perform the subtraction between these two operands, the microprocessor needs to execute the instruction SUBB. Because as you can notice, in the description it is said, subtract the contents of R, which in this case is B, that is the contents within the general purpose register B, which happens to be 1, 2 now, from the accumulator, which is currently holding the value F1. So clearly, we are going to perform the operation F1H minus 1,2H. Now the outcome of this operation is going to be stored within the accumulator itself, and that will also affect the contents of the flags register. Now let's proceed ahead with the operation. Now in the previous chapters, I have told you, within the microprocessor, the subtraction is not performed as subtraction. Rather, it is performed in the form of addition. And for that, if we consider the subtrahend as binary, we have to convert that into two's complement form. However, since in this case we are having hexadecimal digits, so we will convert that into hexadecimal 16's complement. Now in the previous chapters, we already have learned how to convert a hexadecimal value into its equivalent 16's complement. I hope you remember that. The least significant digits place, we will subtract that from one zero of hexadecimal, whereas the most significant digits place will be subtracted from F. Now if we do so, think about it, if we subtract 
2 from 1 0, that is 16 in decimal, the result is going to be 14, which in hexadecimal is E. And at the same time, if the most significant hexadecimal digit is subtracted from F, we will also get the result as E. So the 16th complement of 1 2 is going to be E E. And this value will be added with the minuend. Let's perform the addition now. 1 plus E will give us the value F. Now focus on the most significant digits. We are adding F with E. Now we already know if with the largest hexadecimal symbol we add any other symbol, in the result we are going to have 1 less than the addend. So what is 1 less than E? It is D. Along with that we will also get a carry. Now think about it. We have added two hexadecimal numbers of two digits. And the result of the addition is a three-digit hexadecimal number. Our accumulator can store only two-digit hexadecimal numbers or eight bits in binary. So the result, that is DF, is going to be stored in here. Another thing to notice, when we perform subtraction in two's complement method or in 16's complement method in case of hexadecimal, if after the operation the carry is generated, this signifies that the result is a positive value, or in other words, the minuend is greater than the subtrahend. And this is the reason why we discard it. Now, how we are going to discard it? Remember, when the subtraction operation is performed, the generated carry is fed to the flags register using an inverter. So the carry which has been generated in this case, which is 1, through this inverter, it will reset the carry flag or CY will be 0 now. Try to understand the reason for this. We were supposed to perform subtraction, but we performed addition because we used 16's complement method or in binary 2's complement addition. Due to that, once the carry is generated, that specifies that the value which have been generated as the result is a positive value. So the carry is useless and this is not really generated. Feeding that carry through the inverter and resetting the carry flag signifies that purpose. Now notice, the accumulator already has got the result, that is DF. And the entire operation is supposed to affect all the different flags within the flags register. So let us now find out all the different status of the flags. If we focus on the accumulator's content, it is DF. D is 13 in decimal, which in binary is 1101. So we are getting three ones from D. Now what about F? Hexadecimal F in binary means four ones. So three ones plus four ones, cumulatively we have got seven ones within the accumulator register. Now seven is an odd number. And the parity flag is to be set when the accumulator has even number of ones. So in this case, the parity flag will be reset. Let's now check out the auxiliary carry. Well, as you can notice, while we were performing the addition, there were no carry generated from the least significant digits place. So, in case of auxiliary carry, this flag will also be reset. Now, what about the Z flag? Within the accumulator, do we have all zeros? No, right? So, the Z flag will also be reset. Let's now check the sign flag. Coming to the most significant digit, that is D, in binary it is 1101. So clearly, within the accumulator, the most significant bit is 1. Therefore, the sign bit will be set. But don't worry, the sign flag being set doesn't really mean anything in here because this will be ignored as I told you earlier when we were discussing about the session subtraction in hexadecimal. Since the carry is already 0, it will specify that the content within the accumulator register is a positive value. So this is how the microprocessor is going to execute the SUBB instruction 
if within the accumulator at first we have F1 and within the B register we have 1, 2. By the end of the operation, within the accumulator register, the result that is DF is to be stored. Like we mentioned earlier that the result of the subtraction will also be stored inside the accumulator. And based on the content of the accumulator, all the different flags within the flags register are going to be affected. Do remember, in case of SUBR, there are eight different instructions and this instruction type falls under the one byte long instructions category. So that was all about the instruction type SUBR. Let's now learn about the instruction type SUID8. Now coming to the instruction type SUID8, here the mnemonic SUI means subtract immediate from accumulator. Now what to subtract? We are supposed to subtract D8, that is the data of 8 bit, which is being sent to the microprocessor in immediate addressing mode. So clearly, one operand will reside inside the accumulator register and the other operand we will be sending via the instruction itself. And this is why this instruction falls under the immediate addressing mode. Now think about it. The previous instruction that is SUBR, it falls under the one byte long instructions category. Will it be same for SUID8? Well, it will not. And the reason is, SUI, this mnemonic will need 8 bits. And we are also sending 8 bits of data. So cumulatively, this entire instruction will fall under the 2 byte long instructions category. Now, since we are sending the data of 8 bits in immediate addressing mode, and we already know, one operand will already be inside the accumulator. So for this instruction type, there is only a single instruction. Let me now illustrate how this instruction will work. Now coming to the operands, we are going to use the operands that we used in the previous example itself. So following that, say within the accumulator register, we have got the operand F1. And now we are trying to execute the instruction SUI12H. So this time, we are sending the subtrahend 1 to H via the instruction itself. So clearly we are going to perform this operation. But the difference with the previous case is, in the previous example, we stored the subtrahend within the B register, but this time we are sending it in immediate addressing mode. Now this operation too will affect all the flags within the flags register. But do remember, here also we are not going to perform subtraction. We will be performing addition with EE. Because EE is the 16th complement of 1, 2. So if we add 1 with E, as we have seen earlier, the result will be F. And adding F with E, we will have the result 1D. Now we already know, the least significant two digits of this hexadecimal outcome will be treated as the result. So it will be stored inside the accumulator and the carry which was generated, it is also going to be fed to the carry flag via the inverter or in simple terms, the not get. So the carry is going to be reset. Parity flag, as we discussed earlier within the accumulator, since we are taking the same example, we still have seven ones. So that's an odd number. So the parity flag will be reset. Since we didn't acquire any carry from the least significant two digits, so the auxiliary carry will also be reset. The accumulator's content is DF, not all zeros. So zero flag or the Z flag will also be reset. But the sign flag will be set since D means 1101 in binary and that makes the most significant bit within the accumulator 1. So the sign flag is set, but it will be ignored because since we are performing subtraction, carry being zero will specify that the result is a positive value. So do remember, SUID8, this instruction falls under the two byte long instructions category and there is only a single instruction of this type. Through this instruction, we are sending the subtrahend in immediate addressing mode. So that is all about the instruction type SUID8. 
Let's now focus on the last instruction type of this session, that is DCRR. Coming to the instruction type DCRR, it stands for decrement the contents of R. So we are going to consider the accumulator and all the GPRs, along with them the memory element which will be pointed by the HL register pair. Now in case of DCRR, similar to the instruction type which we have learnt in the earlier sessions, that is INRR, here also, all flags except CY flag, that is the carry flag, are affected depending on the result. Now coming to the instruction type DCRR, this too falls under the category of one byte long instructions. Now let me show you how this is going to work. Say within the accumulator register, we have got the value 03. Now if the microprocessor executes the instruction DCRA, this will decrement the value within the accumulator register, making it 0 to H. So clearly, this instruction will subtract 1 from the contents which were previously inside the accumulator register. Let's now talk about the different variations of DCRR. As I mentioned earlier, we will have DCRA, DCRB, DCRC till DCRL, and along with these, we will also have DCRM. Now let me show you how the DCRM instruction is going to work. Say within the memory location F820, we have got the value FF. Now this is in hexadecimal, but you already know FF in binary is all ones. Now if we want to decrement this value, at first within the HL register pair, we will have to load the address F820. And by doing this, the microprocessor will know that within the memory, the location F820 is now being pointed. Now if we execute the instruction DCRM, notice this instruction also falls under the register indirect category because within the instruction itself, we never mentioned anything directly about the HL register pair. However, it was indirectly mentioned due to the presence of this M. Anyway, if this instruction is executed, since via the HL register pair, the memory location F820 is now being pointed, therefore the contents within that, that is FF for now, is going to be decremented and after the execution of DCRM, the contents within the F820 location will now become FE. So using this instruction, we can also decrement the contents within the memory location. The only thing is, before we execute this instruction, within the register pair HL, we will have to load the intended address. So that is all about the DCRR instruction type. Do remember, it has got 8 different instructions, in other words, 8 opcodes. And the result of this instruction is going to affect all the flags except the carry flag. So in this session, we cover the topics. At first, we learnt about the instruction type SUBR. This instruction falls under the one byte long category. Then we covered the instruction type SUID8. This instruction falls under the two byte long category. And also, here we are using immediate addressing mode. Finally, we learnt about the instruction type DCRR, which falls under the one byte long instructions category. And using this, we can decrement any content which will be specified by this capital R. Whenever we mention capital R, do remember we are talking about the accumulator register, all the general purpose registers, and along with that, the memory location which will be pointed by the HL register pair. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about a couple of more instructions related to the subtraction operation. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.